So uh, I guess that chapter 26 can be our final chapter and this is about mergers and acquisitions. So in this chapter we are going to first uh, learn about the meaning of the mergers and acquisitions and how it is possible in reality. And then uh, in the second section we are going to look at a different way of paying for the mergers and acquisitions and in the third and the fourth sections we are going to learn about uh, the conflicts between the buyers and the sellers so sometimes buyers and sellers are very happy to agree with the M&A's but on the other hand sometimes they don't agree so they fight each other and from the point of view of the seller uh, from the point of view of the defender, you can have defending tactics, but uh, sorry, you can, from the point of view of the offender, the purchaser or the acquirer, you can have offensing tactics, but also from the point of the defenders, you can have some tactics. So we are going to learn about these measures in reality. So, first, we will start by talking about the M&A's in general and we are going to learn about the synergy. First, uh, what are mergers and acquisitions? The acquisition is a more general term regarding the gaining control of another company. And Specifically, in the acquisitions in general, there is a uh, acquirer. Sorry. So the acquirer is the buyer and the target is the seller of the company and in the acquisition it does not mean that the comp these two companies will be a one however uh, it means that the acquirer will get the shares of the target company so it gains the control so after the acquisitions still there can exist two independent companies However, when we talk about the merger, the merger is a absolute combination of these two companies. So after the merger, these two companies will be a single entity, single company. So uh, you can think about the merger as a sub area of an acquisition or the step after the acquisitions but uh, we generally we do not distinguish these two terms uh, definitely but we often use these terms interchangeably so we often use the term such as mergers and acquisitions or M&A and these M&A's are a way of a corporate restructuring which is to change a company's legal form or, or control right. So if you are running a company and if everything is doing great, everything goes fine, then you don't have to change your company. So generally, if you want to have a corporate restructuring, it means that there is a certain problem. So through this kind of corporate restructuring, you may want to achieve the value increase of your firm or profitability increase for your firm. And And we can classify the mergers and acquisitions in three categories. And this is a, this, 
it depends on the value chain or where you stand at your value chain so the value chain means the process that a raw material comes to the end user So, as a final step, maybe uh, the consumers will enjoy your products. So these are the end, and it will start from certain raw materials or other kinds of resources. And there are several steps. For example, if we think about your smartphone, then there are some manufacturers such as Apple or Samsung and there are other companies that produce certain device uh, certain uh, tools for the smartphones for example the LCD manufacturers and uh, the, the uh, semiconductor manufacturers and also other kinds of all kinds of manufacturer or also we have software providers and therefore uh, this is the flow of a value chain and if two companies are combined to each other where the acquirer and the target are on the same page for example, it does not occur in reality. However, if we assume to have a merger between Apple and Samsung, and this is a horizontal integration. So this is uh, acquiring or merging with your competitor. On the other hand, if you acquire or merge with your supplier or if your consumer, your customer firm then this is called as a vertical integration and the horizontal means you are on the same line and the vertical means you are on the same value chain but you are on the on a different process of your value and finally if you are acquiring a company which is not on your value chain and this is called as a diversification it is not related to your own business so you are uh, expanding your businesses into another industry however uh, these classifications are uh, more classical and it does not apply to the real mergers in, and acquisitions in reality anymore Sometimes you have, you cannot classify a single M&A into one of these three classifications. Uh, for example, we had, we 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 had seen the acquisition of Disney. Uh, sorry, the acquisition of Marvel by Disney so uh, the Disney was an acquirer and the Marvel was the seller the target so nowadays the Marvel is a uh, subsidiary of the Disney group right and if you look at this acquisition maybe you can classify this acquisition as a uh, horizontal integration because Disney is also a media corporation so it produces some uh, animations such as or some some movies such as uh, the Little Mermaid and what else Frozen and other kinds of animations at the same time Marvel also produce some contents like 
their comic books and their Marvel uh, movies. So it seems that they are similar in their value chain. So in that sense, you can call this acquisition as a horizontal integration. But at the same time, it can be classified as a vertical integration because uh, Disney is running the Disney World and also it is running the Disney Plus which is a over-the-top industry so you it, it is providing the streaming service and now the Marvel's contents can be played on the Disney Plus exclusively and at the same time the Marvel characters are on the Disney World so Marvel, uh, Disney can use the characters and other uh, other uh, themes of the marbles in their uh, other businesses. So in that sense, this is a vertical integration. So uh, as you can see, uh, the horizontal, vertical, diversification, these classifications cannot be made uh, strictly uh, apart from the others. Uh, you have some certain uh, degree of horizontal integration and the certain degree of vertical integration in a m &A. And then, uh, now I guess that you, 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 you now get a clue about what an m &A is. And then, let me talk about the reason behind the m &A. How m &A is possible. So, uh, as an example, let me imagine a perfect, complete world and, and there is no information asymmetry and everything is known and everything is clear. And then, suppose that there, is, there are two firms for, and firm A wants to acquire firm B. However, uh, the values are different, so the value of firm A is one mil one hundred million dollar, and it has cash of thir uh, thirty million dollar, and the rest of the assets seventy million. On the other hand, the value of firm B is twenty million dollar. So firm A is larger. However, uh, the value will not be changed after the acquisitions. So the value of the firm will remain as twenty million dollars whatever they do. And then, let me think about the possibility for firm A to purchase firm B. First, the firm A can offer $10 million to acquire all shares of firm B. And then, a uh, natural response from the shareholders of firm B is to decline the offer because they already know the, that the value of their firm is already 20 million. However, firm A is not paying a proper money to buy the company. So therefore, it is better for the shareholders of firm B to remain as an independent company. So this acquisition is not possible if the f company A does not pay sufficient money to the shareholders of firm B. And second, let me think about overpayment. So, because company, the firm A has 30 million cash, let's assume that this company uses all of the cash to acquire firm B's shares. And then, the shareholders of firm B will be satisfied, so they are likely to uh, accept the offer. However, at this moment, this is not a good decision for firm A, because for shareholders of firm A, something like this will happen. So, uh, there, the value of the firm was $100 million. However, now they are going to spend $30 million to purchase firm B and in return 
they will get only a firm, another firm, which is worth of $20 million. So overall, what they have is $90 million, which is smaller, lower than the original value of the company. So therefore, this is a poor decision. So for the shareholders of firm A, it will not happen. And then the only choice for these two firms is to pay $20 million for firm B. And then shareholders of firm B can get $20 million in cash overall and the shareholders of firm A will have $100 million as a result because the original value of the firm was $100 million and they pay out $20 million in cash to buy the shares of firm B and they get firm B and they get $100 million again. And then the natural question is, why did they do so? There's nothing changed. So ju this was just a waste of time. So actually, in this kind of situation, no M&As can happen. So acquisition is not possible when the firm value of B does not change before and after the acquisition. However, in reality, after the acquisition, the value of the target can be changed. So let me assume that every other things are the same. However, now the firm B's value will change. Before the acquisition, the value of firm B was 20 million. However, after the acquisition, let's say the value should be $40 million. And then there is a certain uh, change in the result. Again, it does not happen to pay only $10 million to firm B because the shareholders of firm B would not agree on such offer. However, if firm A pays $20 million to acquire firm B, then there is a benefit for the shareholders of firm A. Uh, the, the firm A's shareholders had $100 million before the merger, before the acquisition, and they spent $20 million in cash. And as a result, what they get is the firm B, which is worth of $40 million after the acquisition. So the value for the shareholders of firm A will be $120 million, which has increased from $100 million before the acquisition. So shareholders of firm A has uh, certainly gained some benefits. However, for the shareholders of B, they would not like this kind of situation because they didn't get anything. So uh, in Korea, we have a certain parade something like uh, 사촌이 땅을 사면 배가 아프다. So it means that if you are not affected and then some others can get the benefits, then you don't like this kind of situation. So it is possible, theoretically, when the shareholders of farm bees are all uh, saints, however, it is not possible actually in reality. So, a possible choice for the firm A is to pay uh, money higher than $20 million. So let's say firm A pays $30 million to acquire firm B. And then for the shareholders of firm B, they will like this because their original firm value was only $20 million, but 
for this 20 million dollars they get 30 million so this is a good good choice for firm B but also for the firm A's shareholders this is not a losing game because they paid out 30 million dollars but because of that they were able to get the firm B which is now worth uh, 40 million dollars so as a result the value of their shareholders in total was before the acquisitions it was only 100 million however now it is 110 so there is an increase in the value so this was a uh, not a bad decision for the shareholders of firm A so we can learn from this example that the mergers and acquisitions are only possible when the value changes before and after the acquisitions so it is represented in this formula so the value of firm A and B combined after the acquisition is higher than the value of firm A and the value of firm B added however in this case they are separately operated or managed but the sum of these values are smaller than the value of the combined firm this is the condition for the mergers and acquisitions and here in this example the value change is 20 million dollars it was 20 million dollars the value of the firm B however now it will become 40 million so there is an increase of 20 million dollars so this increase is called as synergy and among the 20 million dollars of the synergy not only shareholders of firm A can enjoy the synergy however they only get half of the synergy which are 10 and the remainder goes to the shareholders of firm B in a way that the firm A pays additional 10 million dollars to firm B so they, the firm B's shareholders get half of the synergy and firm A's shareholders get the half of the synergy so they uh, separate they distribute the synergy into two groups the target shareholders and the acquirer shareholders and the target the, the amount of synergy that the, tar the target gets is called as a premium so the synergy is a positive change in the firm value when the companies are managed together and the acquisition premium or shortly just a premium is the extra money paid to the target addition to the value of the current firm so by giving up certain synergies and giving it instead to the target shareholders now the mergers and acquisitions are possible And then uh, our next questions are about where do the such synergies come from? There are two ways or two resource, two sources of those synergies. First, the revenues can be enhanced, or second, the cost can be reduced. There are several reasons why the revenues can be increased after the acquisition first market dominance especially in the case of the horizontal integration when you acquire your competitors you will get a larger market share in your industry so you can be a monopolistic player in this market and then you can choose your own 
price and nobody will claim to lower your price because the only way that the customers can get the products is to purchase from you so you can charge a larger money so your revenues can increase um, and or you can have more revenues because you sell not only the independent products separately but also you are going to pro sell a set or a uh, couples of products combined bundled together and then uh, some consumers would not purchase these products separately however now you are giving more advantages they may purchase these bundles so that your revenues can be increased there are many reasons why some acquisitions can lead to the reduction in your cost first economy of scales uh, sometimes you experience that uh, in some markets you have each of the company has to pay a lot of cost to maintain their services especially one example is the uh, telecommunication industry so in Korea, we have only three major players in our telecommunication industry, uh, SK Telecom and KT, previously Korean Telecom, and LG U+. and the characteristic of this telecommunication industry is that you first need to install a large amount of your fixed assets all over the country for example you have to have uh, the uh, the uh, telecommunication uh, stations all around the country and it generates a lot of cost for these three companies each of these companies however if for example if these two companies become one then actually they can get rid of some redundant facilities so that their cost can be dramatically reduced so it can lead to the reduction of your cost so this is the economy of scale so when there are many uh, competitors in a market then each of the company has to have their own facilities so they, they have a lot of fixed cost in total however when there are only few companies left they don't have to invest in duplicated assets so their cost can be minimized so this kind of situation is called as economy of scale and the second reason of the cost reduction is the technology sometimes the acquirer uh, do M&A's in order to get the access to the advanced technology that the target company has and by adopting new technologies into your own companies then uh, your uh, production process can be improved and you don't have to hire many people any not anymore so you can have a lower cost and also uh, one major reason behind the M&A is the replacement of the M&A particularly for the target companies sometimes the, the value of the target is lower despite the fact that the target has a lot of potential to grow 
And one of the reason is it, this company is currently managed by poor managers who is not great at managing this company. However, when there is an M&A, after the M&A, the acquirer now has a majority of the voting power and it can vote to fire the existing manager and it can hire new manager who will do better than the previous manager and by changing the manager now it will be operated more efficiently so that the value can be increased right then uh, let me talk about the way of payment the form of payment uh, sometimes the M&A's are done by paying cash directly to the target shareholders but sometimes the ac acquirer pays its own stock gives its own stock to the target shareholders instead of cash and there are some, some advantages to, the, to these two different choices for the acquirer when you pay cash, this is better because there is no delusion. On the other hand, if you give your shares to the target shareholders, then you are issuing new shares and giving it to the new shareholders. So the previous ownership of your original shareholders will be reduced. On the other hand, if you pay the money only in cash, there is no delusion. And for the target company's shareholders, better in the sense that they can get what they are promised. So cash are cash. So this is a fixed amount of money. So there is no uncertainty. So uncertainty. However, if, if they instead receive shares, then the stock price can change in the future. And then what they get as a result can be changed. So in order to avoid uncertainty, the target shareholders may prefer cash acquisitions. But stock acquisitions have their own advantages. For the acquirer, it makes M&A possible even though the acquirer doesn't have enough cash. So this is a way uh, to facilitate the acquisitions and mergers. And for the target shareholders, if you receive cash and if you sell your shares, then that's the end. You will not participate as a shareholder in the managing of management of the company. However, if you receive shares, it means now you can participate still participate or be involved in the management. And also, if you believe that the combined companies can be operated better, then there will be a higher stock price in the future. So if you are holding shares, then you can enjoy it in tomorrow or in, in the next year. So you can earn extra profits by selling the shares at a higher price. So uh, there are certain pros and the cons and pros and cons for cash acquisitions and stock acquisitions. And uh, th in this example, I'd like to introduce uh, the the determination of the uh, of you, of your payment. So uh, let me think about this. So there are two companies again. And firm A wants to pay $115 to acquire firm B. So $115 is the promised money. Currently, firm A has 25 shares in total. And the, each of the share is priced at $20. For firm B, it has only 10 shares. 
and each of the price is ten dollar the synergy expected is ninety million ninety dollar and if it is done by the cash acquisition it means the firm A will pay $115 in cash to firm B. Then the value of the merged firm will be changed after the acquisition. So uh, the value of the firm A before the acquisition was 20 times 25. This is the stock price. This is the number of shares. So it is worth of $500 and before the acquisition the value of B was 100 because it has 10 shares outstanding and the stock price was 10 the synergy after the acquisition is $90 so it can be added to the value of the combined firm however the company paid $115 to the shareholders of firm B to exit. So uh, this $115 will be paid out. So there is a reduction in the value. So the final value of the acquisition will be $575. And because you have only 25 shares in this case for the acquirer the stock price is 575 divided by 25 so the stock price will become 23 so the stock price before the acquisitions was $20 however now it will increase to $23 so there are $3 increases in the stock price so you can see that thanks to the synergy the company has earned something for their shareholders so you can see that the firm A's shareholders has gained $75 in total and then firm B's shareholders also get $15 because their original firm value was 100 but they get the premium of $15 right so each of the shareholders get something from the acquisition another way of doing acquisition is to giving the shares of the combined company to the target shareholders and uh, let me just explain that let me just assume at this moment that for the shares of firm B it will be exchanged to 0 0.5 shares of firm A uh, later I'm going to explain why 0 0.5 comes out and then firm A needs to issue new shares the firm B's shares are 10 and for these shares you are giving 0.5 shares to each of the shares so you have to issue 5 new shares and because your existing shares are 25 it means your changed number of shares will become 30 after the acquisition and then the value of the combined firm will be calculated like this so here first before the acquisition the value of A was 20 times 25 which is 500 and the value of B was 10 times 10 which was 100 and the synergy was 90 however con contrary to the previous case in this stock acquisition you don't pay the cash so there is no reduction in the value so the value of the merged firm will become 690 so if you just look at the value of the company it seems more 
it seems better to have stock acquisitions than the cash acquisitions because in the case one the value of the company was only 575 however now it is 690 however it is not true because you have to look at shareholders not the com company itself so now the stock price is 690 divided by not 25 but 30 shares because now you have increase in the number of shares so therefore the stock price will be 690 divided by 30 so still the stock price will be 23 so it means this 23 is the same as case one's result of the stock price so you can see that for the uh, regardless of cash or stock payment the value of the shareholders are the same for the firm A H then how it affects the management so let's look at further uh, among the 50 f uh, among the 30 shares of the new firm the five newly issued shares are now in the hand of firm B's shareholders and therefore what they get is five shares each worth of $23 and this is again $115 so you can check that they had got what they are promised and then the wealth of the original shareholders uh, the existing shareholders is $23 times 25 shares which are 575 and this is again the same as the result in case 1 575 so cash acquisition stock acquisitions they give the same result then the difference is that the ownership of firm A has been changed the uh, previously in the cash acquisition they can have 100% control of the company however in the stock acquisitions their ownership is reduced from 100% to 83% about about 